Something that's very, very interesting about this book, I think, is that you've noticed for somebody who <clears throat> loves to put a lot of layers of meaning in the backgrounds of their books, there are a lot of white mm. spaces. And at the same time, something else is happening in this book, um, which I was saying to uh, Anthony just now, it makes this book feel like the beginning of something new, which is that um, the illustrations are really done in a slightly different, rather different way. Again, we've got black and white, um, but they're much looser, more childlike in a way. And, I mean, tell us a little bit about why you did that okay. and how that, because it's really in interesting. Okay. Well, I, I, you, I nearly always work with the first page and work right the way through to the back. So the right at the beginning, it's a very detailed heavy, every little bit of fur painted, every detail on the, water, on, the, on, on the wallpaper. And that's how I started, that in my traditional manner. Um, then, as I was painting this big picture here, it felt, I think I was, I, I was quite pleased with the drawings I'd done in the rough, actually. Um, they were done quite quickly. I don't know if you can see them. From... And I, and... And nearly all my roofs are like that, drawn quickly and loosely, and I don't use reference, I don't look at photographs of gorillas, I just uh, draw them. And I wanted to try and capture some of the feeling of, of the original dummy. So here, this is a mixture of detailed realism around the eyes and the nose, and the fur here, but other areas of kind of loose watercolour, and I liked the contrast between the two, I liked the fact that lots of white space, that there was loose watercolour and tight. And so... I started to use different styles throughout the book. I know traditionally it's sort of accepted that if you start in one style, you carry on in that style. But here with the, with the keepers, they're, they're worried, they're anxious, so I'm starting to use cross-hatching to, to sort of try and give this feeling of worrying about an idea. Um, the kitten, of course, is done in classic greetings card style, which is something I used to do. And then as, the, as they get further and further, as they get happier and happier, the pictures are getting looser. Until this one, the kind of loosest picture I've ever done. And this, we weren't so sure about this to begin with. For a we, while, weren't. Were we? we weren't. We weren't. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it didn't look like that. In, of course, in the dummy, it looks fine, because it's just a very rough drawing of a gorilla against a white background. Actually... With this, I think um, it was going to be white, mm. like, like the rest of the book with white backgrounds and so on. And actually, um, you discussed with Louise the um, idea of putting the background in. The wallpaper in the background, yeah. yeah. Which somehow just holds the picture in the book. It brings it into the same landscape as the rest of the book. To begin with, it did, I'm sure it did look very peculiar. It, it, Suddenly coming in the book, this very sketch. I'm sure looking back maybe on some of my early books, when I did put things in the background, just as little jokes, um, Hansel and Gretel was a breakthrough for me because I think it was the first time I started to use those little details in the background to tell the story. And I think that was because I hadn't written the book myself, so I was more conscious or self-conscious about how I was going to tell this story that had been told so many times in picture books. And so I found myself using details like the witch's hat, for instance, to tell the story. And that was the beginning of, I think, a tentative understanding of, of how images and, picture, and words can work together. I mean, as I said, I think I, think I feel Little Beauty feels like the beginning of a new style of illustration mm. or experimenting, which is very, very exciting. But, I mean, I know that you trained... Well, you worked as a medical illustrator mm. a long, long time ago. Um, do you think that made you draw the way you've drawn for the last... As I've, I, I've heard myself talking and saying, that's why. But if I'm completely honest, no, I think I've always drawn like that, actually. <laughs> My art teacher at, um, at school used to say... Um, Oh, you want, don't use a little brush like that. And he gave me a four-inch brush, because that's how he painted. If you're drawing people dancing, you want to use this kind of a brush, not a tan little brush. <coughs> and I used to think, even as a children's uh, illustrator, I used to look at um, Michael Foreman's washes in the early days and think, oh, that's the way to use watercolour. Let the paint do the work flowing into each other. It looks great. And I, and I thought, maybe I should be 
graduating into that style of painting. But then I, I, I ended up saying, well, no, that wouldn't be me. That would be me pretending to be Michael Foreman. So the way I draw at any given moment is probably to do with how I'm feeling. Right. Uh, right. And I think whichever, whatever painting I'm painting, is, uh, I'm, I'm either, I, either it reflects how I'm feeling on a personal level or I'm empathising with the, with the characters in the story. Mm -hmm. And in this particular book, that's, that style or the kind of mixture of styles felt completely right. Now, I, it may go somewhere. I may, I may come back with all sorts of new imagery. But, who <laughs> know, but, but I'm, it feels as though I'm not in control of it. Right. Certainly it's, it's made me think, oh, yeah, well, you don't have to have, you know, a, a set style for a book or two set styles or three set styles.